webinar will be recorded. And so uh, we will post the recording uh, on the STEM guitar website. And it will probably also be hosted on our YouTube channel uh, once we uh, get it edited and processed. So without further ado, we'll get started. Let me introduce myself. I'm Tom Singer. I am the PI for the STEM guitar project now. Uh, and I am a mechanical engineering technology faculty member at Sinclair Community College. And so I'm, it's kind of like herding cats with uh, our team many times is if you're on very early, you heard a lot of the discussion. But nonetheless, this is a phenomenal team that we've assembled and uh, they do amazing work and they've been working really hard to get this remote learning environment set up and ready to go for you this summer. Uh, next up is Mike Akins. Uh, my name is Mike Akins. I am a retired engineering technology professor from Butler County Community College. And uh, I was the first PI of the first rounding of funding when we started this project. <laughs> and never, ever did we ever think that 12 years later that we'd have this many people on a call across the country. Uh, we're looking forward to the week people have worked very very hard on your behalf and i would like to congratulate you and i'd also like to just kind of celebrate the fact that we have educators across the country that are willing to try something new for the benefit of their students and uh that's something to celebrate and next is going to be uh my older brother steve brown <laughs> thanks a lot mike hey everybody uh this is steve brown i taught uh, design and drafting for 32 years uh, at the community college level, uh, most recently uh, um, at College of the Redwoods in Eureka, California, now retired in Bend, Oregon, and looking forward to working with all of you. And we've got Debbie coming up next. Thanks, Steve. Hi, folks. My name is Debbie French, and I'm an assistant professor of science education at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. Um, it's hard to believe, but I've been with the grant for 12 years now, and it's been a fantastic adventure um, for all 12 of those years. It's been uh, wonderful. We're excited to have you join us. Um, and so Nancy will introduce herself next. Thanks, Debbie. This is Nancy Wilson Chang, and I'm here in Seattle. Um, I am a high school math teacher at an alternative school in Edmonds, Washington, which is just a little north of Seattle. Um, I did my first build uh, with uh, guitar with a guitar building project about 10 years ago, looking for something that was hands-on to uh, show kids what math is for, you know, in a way that was interesting to them. And I joined the uh, STEM guitar project nationally a few years after that. So next up is Doug. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Doug Hunt. I'm in East Central Indiana, and I teach at Southern Wells High School. Um, also in Indiana. I've been there for about 22 years and have been with the STEM Guitar Project from its inception. Uh, and I use the guitar making as a wee, way to teach uh, manufacturing concepts uh, in the course of the manufacturing curriculum. So I'm looking forward to the time that we have this year, uh, this summer with the Cigar Box Guitar Acoustic Guitar Edition. Thanks, folks. Next up is going to be Sean Hawes. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sean Haas. I am the technology, Instructional Technology Services uh, Director at San Diego State University. And when I first joined the team, I was at a, a high school, actually as a tech director also, um, and teaching this uh, topic. I'm gonna be helping a lot with um, how you're actually gonna interact with this content online this summer. So pretty much all things tech I can help with. Good to have you here. Up next is Chad. Hi everybody, I'm Chad McCormick coming to you from North Berwick, Maine. I teach high school math at Wells High School in Wells, Maine. Uh, in 2013, I attended my first STEM guitar project workshop in Ventura, California with Scott and Steve and Doug and Debbie. And it was uh, just a career changing and life changing experience. Uh, really happy to have you all on board with us this summer, even though it's in a, a virtual setting. Uh, we hope you have a great time with us. And we hope that you'll join us again next summer, hopefully in a in a you know face to face capacity. Um, that's all. Uh, oh my goodness! I get to introduce Tim Wilhelm. Last my, but not my least, day, my day is made. <laughs> Tim Wilhelm, everybody. Last but not least, and the I think probably the oldest person on the team, 
although 12 years old on the inside. Um, I was the program coordinator for electrical engineering technology at Kankakee Community College, uh, currently retired, although uh, teaching STEM guitar at KCC kind of keeps me in the game, keeps me from being retired. And I have to say it's one of the most fun courses I've ever taught and uh, definitely keeps me fulfilled and busy in my retirement years. Welcome. So that's not only our uh, guitar team that's actually on board here. We have got a bevy of other uh, team members that will be helping out in the chat room. If you do have a question, post it in the chat room. Uh, and we'll have it funneled through and get it answered. We will have a Q&A session at the very end for sure, but if there's something that comes up as we're talking, feel free to post it in chat, and if we need to address it, um, we'll be alerted to that uh, operation. So what does our outline look like today? Well, first off, we're gonna try to keep it as close to an hour as possible, so we're gonna keep uh, moving along. But we're gonna be looking at uh, the history of STEM guitar, just to give you a quick idea, um, we've got 12 years of experience um, building instruments and, and working in this environment. And so we can share a lot of fun and exciting stories and so forth that have happened. We've had a lot of really amazing experiences. Implementation, how to's, we've, we've got the flex hybrid model. Um, there's a good probability that some of you may be doing a hybrid instruction in the fall. How could that look? Could the summer's operation uh, help you in that implementation? Um, what the remote learning institutes are going to be looking like, our Canvas materials and evaluation environments. There's also supply lists that we're going to ask you to, to pick up depending upon what team you're going to be working with or some additional supplies that you may have or that you may need to pick up. More on that later. Um, we'll talk briefly about the STEM Guitar Summit and how you can get involved with the, uh, the amazing summit that we have each year and then the general Q&A. Mike, would you like to get us started? Sure. Um, just, just a couple minutes of kind of how we got here. And I think it's important to note that this was started by just a bunch of educators, just like the folks that are on this call. And when we started this, we really didn't know exactly how and where hotspots were going to occur. And what we found out is the hotspots or the schools that implemented occurred where there was a champion. In other words, somebody like you that was willing to take a chance something they hadn't done. Um, and that's what Tom and I did. We were just like you. Uh, we had the advantage of, in, in 2006, we attended uh, Mark French, Dr. French's uh, very first Purdue guitar workshop, and that was for enthusiasts. So Tom and I attended that, and uh, as we were doing this five-day workshop, very intense, um, you know, we just kept kind of thinking, you know, it's, I think we can do this. This seems like something we can do at the college. This seems like something we can do with our students. So we both went back to our home institutions and kind of kicked the tires on it for a semester. And then the next year, we, we really did implement at each of our schools. Uh, we really hadn't been awarded the STEM guitar grant yet. We were still operating under a different grant from the National Science Foundation. It was a project uh, life cycle management grant. And uh, we used that as a project, and little did we know we were really positioning ourselves for, you know, a, a, a very, very successful program to teach STEM content in a very innovative, practical, fun, dynamic way. Uh, <clears throat> after we started implementing, Sinclair officially became our manufacturing site, and that Calling Sinclair Manufacturing Site doesn't do it justice. Uh, Tom and his folks have done an incredible job in the last 10 years, and I'm sure Tom can come up with some numbers uh, that have come out of the guitar uh, workshop. Uh, in 2009, 2007, 2008, we were starting to write a grant. So we wrote a grant, and Butler County Community College, my, my college, was awarded. Actually, it was the largest National Science Foundation grant they had ever been awarded. And that's when the grant actually started. 
uh, we started off by conducting uh, three workshops that very first summer. And uh, towards the end of that summer, we started the redesign of the net. Um, uh, the kits that we're going to be using, and I, I believe uh, this is going to be mentioned, uh, are different than the nets that we had designed in the early stages. When we do our face-to-face -face workshops, hopefully starting very soon, uh, those are the nets that we will be using. Uh, by 2011, we'd conducted six more workshops, and we we really had a continuous quality improvement attitude. We wanted the next to be better. We wanted the systems to be better. We wanted processes to be better. And just like you, as educators, we did make things better. Um, and then in 2012, again, we conducted five more workshops. And by this time, the STEM guitar project was really starting to be known across the country and within the National Science Foundation itself. Um, and, uh, and, and then we got funded again. We wrote another grant. And in 2013, we got funded again. And what's really unique, folks, is we get funded a million dollars for every three years, which translates into uh, four years. But we have been funded three funding cycles in a row, which is pretty unusual for a project. And that's because there's people like you on the other end listening to us and really getting all excited about it. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Tom to finish this timeline. Yeah. So as you can see on the timeline, we continually improve our products as we go along. So we're actually uh, implementing in our manufacturing environment our, the continuous improvement of how we manufacture the guitar kits. And so they, the guitar kits uh, that uh, we'll be using the summer are actually economy guitar kits, and these are imported from Southeast Asia. However, our signature line is what we actually manufacture at Sinclair. And we also have a separate manufacturing facility out in Washington State, Central Washington University. They're actually a manufacturing partner, and they, they utilize that as a class for their graduate and undergraduates to, to run a manufacturing run of our uh, guitar products. As you can see, in 2018, we moved to Fusion 360, and that is now our basis of all of our design files. So um, if you're going to be doing the CNC uh, learning this summer with us, you'll be using Fusion 360 extensively, but all of our model files, which are available, are uh, in Fusion 360. And as you can see, we've, we've built 12,000 guitar kits over the years. Uh, it was a huge milestone when we hit the 10,000th manufactured uh, kit out of our lab. We're up to about 12,000, probably a little bit higher now, um, as we continue to um, manufacture and then sell kits to the high schools and colleges around uh, the nation. We've trained over 850 educators across the United States. If you have any friends in South Dakota or North Dakota, those are the last two states that we have not had any educators join us from. So again, call out to the, to the North and South Dakota environment. We'd love to be able to, to say that we've had educators from all 50 states um, join us in our uh, STEM guitar learning. So our project impact, as you can see, is quite national. And these are the icons. This is actually from our website. So if you go to guitarbuilding.org, you've seen this map. And we update this map um, on a regular basis. These are actually where we've held events or where we're planning to hold events. And the uh, stars, uh, the red, white, and blue stars, are for the veterans events that we also uh, have been experimenting with over the last couple of years. And so we're actually doing short-term training workshops for veterans um, in a rehabilitative uh, environment. And we've been getting really good positive feedback uh, from the veteran groups uh, regarding uh, having the uh, veterans build guitars with us as part of an opportunity. So I'm going to turn it over to Nancy and she'll talk a little bit about why does this work so well. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Tom. Well, this does work, and you're going to find that out hopefully soon, next year in, in the fall. Um, the first thing I want to let you know is that implementing or teaching uh, how to build guitars is doable for all sorts of teachers. You don't have to be a CTE 
industrial arts or woodshop expert because I am was I had never done anything like this in my life. I am a math teacher. I you know write on the whiteboard all day long and, and have a smart board, that kind of thing. I had never built anything. I never took woodshop or taught a CTE class in my life. And guess what? I have been teaching full guitar building classes for about eight years now to my students. And um, I just like everyone to be reassured that if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> it, it the way that the curriculum and the steps are laid out and the way the instruction is done um, during the summer workshops is just so great that you will actually be able to turn around and do this with your kids, um, which I, I don't know of many projects that can um, elevate uh, someone like me to uh, a, a level of learning that the guitar building project offers. Um, there are a variety of ways to implement. Um, you, if you are an academic type of a teacher and don't have access to Woodshop, you can use the curriculum only, which is our uh, modular learning activities or MLAs. We have lots of lessons that are all pre-written that are great to use in a class where you're using guitars as examples of um, how various academic uh, subjects can be implemented or used um, in building a guitar. Or of course you can do a full class the way that I've been doing it. Um, we have lots of teachers that do it as an after school club or a combination of those. And you know, brand new this year, we are all gonna learn how to do with this remotely through a Canvas course. <laughs> and when we do the Canvas course, we are planning to use as Tom mentioned, these pre-made necks. So there's a little less of the uh, technical part because that's we're anticipating might be difficult to do remotely. So that using the pre-made necks, which a lot of our teachers do anyway, is gonna really help with that. Um, the other thing I love about it is that this appeals to all types of students. My first round of teaching guitar building, I only had one girl in my class but the whole class was new. I had to kind of recruit a little bit. But after that first group built their guitars, you know, they were famous. And the next semester, over half of my class were girls. And I've had a high um, balance between boys and girls and all other types of, uh, of students. You know, no matter how they identify, they love building guitars because who doesn't love guitar? This is the, a high level of interest. Everyone, uh, no matter what type of music you like, Probably there's a you know guitar style that fits in with that, and and guitars are just so cool. I mean, I know I wish I could have said I, in high school I built a guitar. I feel pretty cool being able to say at my age I built a guitar. So we have no problem getting kids interested in this. It just appeals to everybody, and the success rate is just so high, higher than any other class that I teach, uh, algebra, geometry, that sort of thing. Um, we it, our data shows that 99% complete their guitars. And one thing about this is that no matter whether a, um, a student is a straight A student or a struggling student, when you come into guitar building class, it's kind of the, a, a leveler. Everyone is a beginner. You know, I have never had a student so far that has already built a bunch of guitars. You know, they're all beginners and it's all um, something that they're all on the same page on day one. And once they begin designing and creating a guitar, I mean, they are so motivated and inspired to complete the project. And they're not just trying to, what's the minimum I can do to get it done and, you know, pass like they might do in a math class. They want this to be, you know, their signature work. They want it to be beautiful. They want it to sound wonderful. They want to play it. I think it really raises the bar on their work, work ethic and the quality of work they produce. And um, apparently the 1% who may not finish their guitar, those are usually due to um, extenuating circumstances like health, attendance, and other things like that. We've never really had anyone say, um, I don't wanna finish my guitar, it's boring. <laughs> That's never happened to me. And uh, lastly, the last thing I'm gonna mention here is that the curriculum is also just to reassure you that they will learn math and science and technology and engineering. These are aligned with national standards and workforce skills. And Dr. Debbie French is going to discuss the national standards, common core standards for math and next generation science standards a little later in the presentation. But I wanted to mention that um, this 
this course also really helps kids with workforce skills. Um, they get to use practical math operations, um, measurement. They are going to interpret wiring schematics. They will be troubleshooting issues, problem solving, and they also learn other soft skills that are desirable in the workplace, like teamwork, flexibility, time management, work ethic, and, and interpersonal and leadership skills. And I see this with students, you know, the student that struggles often in a typical class where you're just sitting at a desk and answering problems out of a book, that type of student gets into guitar building and it turns their lives around. And that is the student who can finally shine and be the star. And with that, Tim is gonna continue this conversation. Hi there, uh, carrying on with all the good points Nancy has made. Uh, the first little line there, project-based learning. Um, I've got to tell you, I like to tell the administration at my school, this is project-based learning at its best. And in fact, when I first started teaching the STEM guitar course at KCC, I managed to convince the uh, vice president of student activities or student instruction and uh, he took the course and now he's the president of the college and the guitar he built hangs in his office and uh, he promotes it just as much or more than anybody else that we have. Um, and it is project-based learning and it's not just about building a guitar. I like to also emphasize this is a STEM course, science, technology, engineering, and math. And this past semester, I had a student take the class and a friend of his, who is also a friend of mine, asked him, well, how's it going? And he said, well, it's a great class, but they fooled me. And my friend asked him, well, what do you mean they fooled you? And he said, I'm learning stuff I didn't really want to learn, but it, you know, it's actually kind of cool. I'm learning the math. Now I know how to calculate fret spacing and all this stuff. But, you know, at first he was like, oh gosh, this is kind of boring, but then let's get in the lab. But then he's like, wow, I'm really learning some good stuff. And now he's going to be coming back and taking some more STEM type classes because it kind of turned him on, melted his butter and floated his boat. Um, and as Nancy said, it does appeal to a wide range of, of types of students, not just uh, is this gender neutral, it's culturally neutral and it's age neutral. At a community college, I have had uh, high school students sign up, it's an evening class, they've signed up and taken the course. I've had people almost my age sign up and take the course. In addition to that, I had a guy this last semester who does build guitars. He took the class and he was surprised that even he learned some things, that the quality of the curriculum is so good that uh, he's taken it and now he's going to encourage some of his guitar building friends to also take the class. A third line increases student confidence. The first time I taught STEM guitar at KCC, at the end of the semester, a young man came up to me last day of class, holding his guitar in his hands, and he said, Mr. Wilhelm, thank you for saving my life. And I looked at him and I said, what are you talking about? He said, no, you don't understand. He said, my dad bailed on us when I was about five years old. I didn't have a father figure or male role model growing up or anybody who taught me how to use tools. He said, I came into this class as a guitar player who did not know how to use a screwdriver. And because I'm a guitar player, I was so afraid of failing. But then he held up his guitar, smiled as big as can be and said, but look what I did. And uh, he said, you, you have changed my life. And I said, well, I didn't do it. You did it. And he said, yeah, but you helped and guided. And I said, well, what are you going to do from here? He said, you know, I learned from this that some of this math and science stuff isn't that hard. I'm going to go on and get my bachelor's degree and be a high school physics teacher. I said, far out. So it does have an impact like that. Community interest and involvement. We've had newspaper articles. I've tried to get the local TV station, but well, they're not, not really so local. Haven't succeeded in that yet, but I did partner with the local music store. And I got a big banner from them to go on the wall right beneath the STEM guitar banner. And at the end of the semester, that music store prints congratulatory certificates for the students and passes out um, like free string winders and electronic tuners to go on the headstock of their guitar. And of course, it's good for them because it builds a customer base. 
but also they spread the word in the store and that helps keep the enrollment up. Another thing that helps keep the enrollment up is that, and this is something that you might shoot for at your school, especially if you're a community college, um, STEM guitar course has become a model now for other courses. And we got state approved a whole series of STEM courses. We have the ELTR program for electrical engineering. You know, we have SCI for the science division. Now we have STM courses just for general STEM project-based learning courses. And the second one we created is STEM 3D printing. Students go in and build 3D printers from scratch along the lines of the STEM guitar course. And now because it's state approved, this course is a legitimate elective that can be transferred to a four-year university from the community college. And so students now that need electives, no matter what program they're in, they're, I'm gonna go build a guitar. And they come down and, and take the STEM guitar class. One student who did that, uh, she was in the medical career. She was doing like a pre-med nursing thing, wanted to eventually go on to be a doctor. After taking STEM guitar, she got so excited, she signed up and took it a second time as an audit. And after that, she changed her major to engineering. So it really is a, a very effective program and it works for all these reasons. Now, the last line on the slide there, relatively low cost to get started. Um, it mentions there at the end, you can make this sustainable if you build and sell guitars. And you can do creative things with that. For example, go to the local microbrew, ask them to donate some money to build two guitars, and you then can pay the lab fee or however you're going to do it for at least one underprivileged student to build a guitar and then have the teacher build a guitar that's shaped like a beer bottle. The neck of the bottle is the neck of the guitar and, you know, laser etch the name of the microbrew there and they can hang it on their wall. Customers can come in, drink beer and play guitar. So also I found out, and this has worked for me, you can get plugged in with like local woodworking clubs. And there's a lot of old guys like me that have really decked out wood shops in their garage. And they're thinking, you know, I'm getting too old for this now and I got to do something with all these woodworking tools and you can get some pretty sweet donations of woodworking equipment from senior citizens ready to pass their hobby on to something else. So anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Onward from here. So we're going to move on to talk a little bit about our flex and hybrid learning implementation here this for the summer. So Doug and Chad are going to, to speak to that. Yeah, let's start with Chad McCormick. Uh, thanks, Doug. Um, you know, all of us are teachers um, in this weird environment. All of us, you know, got sent home for a number of months. And um, those of us who are implementing um, had to figure out how to do this from home with students. So I think we're just going to talk a bit about um, how this can actually work. Um, in a virtual setting, whether it's, you know, half in school, half away, or completely virtual, or um, if you're fortunate enough, face-to-face. -face. Um, for me, um, my class is a two out of three trimesters class, and um, I'm capped at eight students uh, per course. And when we went to our closure, we had just done um, – sealing of the bodies and the necks, uh, electronics were done, but all of a sudden we had these, you know, half completed guitars and students were sent home. Um, so I, I got approval to get my kits into the hands of my students and they had to quarantine the boxes that I sent them home with for three days before they could open them. And then I did a series of uh, video instruction to walk them through the assembly process um, and I, I really leaned heavily on our existing MLAs that were mentioned earlier and also, you know, came up with my own material along the way. And I would say if we're in a position where we need to do a, you know, half in school, half out of school, or perhaps, you know, start the year completely out of school, um, if you go with the already assembled necks, that you know, this can be done virtually, and you guys that are gonna be with us this summer will get a, a taste of that. Um, it can be done. Um, now, 
in a coronavirus free world, um, you know, this program can be implemented as an after school activity. Uh, Dave Parker, who's on the call with us, um, he and I started at Noble High School in North Berwick, Maine back in, oh Dave, what was it, uh, 2013. And our first year was an after school club. And then after success with the after school club, we were able to um, hold a semester long course. So we did a group of students for one semester and another group for the other semester. And, and it was um, a science elective. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll just kind of pause right there. Uh, Doug, you want to jump in and, and add your thoughts to that? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, a lot of folks do start with an after school program like Chad mentioned. Um, I'm kind of at the other end of the spectrum and have from the onset uh, incorporated the guitar making into a manufacturing class. It's actually grown to the point now where this fall uh, it's going to be scheduled as a half, half of a day experience for students. Um, as a CTE course with Indiana's embrace of, of CTE in the last couple of years. Um, we don't know what the fall holds. We don't know what the coming school year holds. And so, um, you know, the plan this year is going to be definitely to get into the kits and get into making the wood chips fly as soon as possible and cover as much ground, not knowing at what point things, things in the situation may change. So, we have a vast collection of videos on the STEM Guitar YouTube channel that guide people through all the major steps and processes, which could be useful for e-learning experiences, whether to build alongside the YouTube videos or to watch as sort of um, a homework or flipped classroom kind of environment so that you could make some questions up about what's in the video so that when you come back in, students already have an idea what to anticipate and cover that much more ground in the time available when there is face-to-face. -face. I know some schools are going to be looking at perhaps 50-50 kind of split where the classes are only half filled and students only go to school uh, a couple days a week instead of the 100% the, um, combined attendance. And given the, the likelihood from more e-learning experiences, uh, we can lean heavily on that, that uh, collection of MLAs that we have on our website as well as the STEM guitar uh, YouTube channel and you get into this and get excited it is really easy to create your own YouTube channel I started a YouTube channel back in March and have added a number of videos to it and um, you know that was a, a principal mean means of delivering content during that time and I think as we move forward as educators that's something that we sort of have to kind of wrap our heads around is the fact that we need to be able to handle some instruction when we can't all be there and this is being a hands-on activity, definitely a very unique challenge. So um, we all wanna keep our attention focused on how ways that we can think of to, to use this and leverage the internet and e-learning connections to make this all fly. So Chad, any other thoughts? Um, well, I know that we have a Q&A session at the end of this, but we had, um, we had an excellent question pop up in the chat that I just can't let go right now. Um, Andy out in Washington State asks about, you know, how do you make sure that all of your students have the necessary tools? And, and I can't speak, you know, to what your situation is going to be. But for me, um, I put together a Google form, just a survey to all of my students with check boxes of all of the tools and materials that would be necessary to complete those instruments from the time we closed. Um, until, you know, getting those guitars across the finish line and they all, you know, checked off the tools that they had at home. And then I then put together a list of, of all the tools that weren't checked and I was allowed back into the school building and I could collect, you know, three soldering stations. Um, I put together a sandpaper pack for all of the kids. Um, made sure everybody had the correct drill bit sizes, that sort of thing. And it was kind of like a, a sign out situation. Um, it, it can be done. It's tricky. I, I know we're all teachers here. We all dealt with tricky over the last three months, uh, but it can be done. And I would just say that um, you're all going to be doing this virtual build with us starting next month. And we're really going to be doing it as you would with your students. Uh, we will have uh, videos specifically put together and, and we've started making them. Actually, we're well underway of, of making um, procedural videos for the economy kits that you will have complete access to. 
if you decided to go this route with your students or if you had to go this route with your students. Um, as Doug mentioned, and it was mentioned before, all of the MLA content, um, the STEM guitar YouTube channel, uh, you, it's doable. And, and you're gonna see that it's doable in, in the month of July when we all go through this together. Okay, thank you. Chad and Doug on the hybrid learning environment. Next up is our curriculum alignment uh, discussion uh, with Dr. Debbie French and to give us a heads up on how we align with some of the national standards. Debbie may have a, can I? Uh, Is Debbie muted? Oh, she's asking you to unmute her, Tom. I saw that. Okay, must have had a reconnection there. You should be unmuted, Debbie. Awesome, thank you, sorry about that. I'm in the boonies here. Um, so I'm going to just be very brief because I don't think we joined the webinar to talk about standards. Um, just know that all of our MLAs are aligned like Nancy and Chad and others have mentioned to the Next Generation Science Standards, to the Common Core Standards, to ISTE, as well as different um, skills uh, standards that Nancy had talked about. So soft skills, as well as um, 21st century skills. So all that to say is we've done the background work for all of you to um, easily customize the MLAs to fit whatever you're teaching. I know Clarence said that he didn't need to include the math or science for this program, but it's always a good idea to sneak in, you know, some different um, curricular connections wherever we can. So sorry about that. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Debbie. Let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen uh, coming up here in July. And so this is kind of one of our more important slides that uh, you'll be seeing today in terms of timelines. And again, more information will be uh, sent out by your team leaders as we uh, get closer to that environment. So this is going to be both a synchronous and asynchronous learning environment that we're going to be um, immersing in over a couple of week period or over a few week period, uh, which means it gives you flexibility that you don't have to be there exactly on, you know, day one or exactly on day five. You've got time to, uh, to work within that period to accomplish the tasks. During that period of time, uh, there'll be some synchronous uh, learning opportunities, basically Q&A sessions, problem solving sessions uh, that we're going to be putting together to do live Zoom meetings with. So they will be both demonstration orientation, but a lot of it will be problem solving and Q&A. Um, hey, this didn't work, or I've got an issue with this. How do I solve this problem? Uh, those are things that uh, we'll be covering on a synchronous basis also. The, uh, the course emails will go out uh, June 29th. And so you'll receive an invite to the Canvas courses that we're currently working on uh, as a team uh, that week. A question came up about guitar kits in the chat. The guitar kits will get shipped out here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you'll have them well before the courses start after the 4th of July. You'll probably have them before July 1st in many cases. Uh, so uh, that no worries about making sure that uh, uh, that you uh, don't have the materials at hand. Um, continuing on, we'll talk about the CNC uh, and Electric Remote Institute. So Steve, um, take it away. All right, great. So uh, last summer was our first summer to offer the what we call our hybrid CNC Electric Guitar Institute. Uh, we wrote that, um, that effort into our last grant because we were hearing from a lot of teachers about uh, their desire to include CNC, 3D printing, lasers, those kinds of things, uh, that kind of curriculum into the guitar uh, building process. And uh, so we decided, well, there's, there's our next adventure. And so, uh, so we took off with that, offered the, the first series of courses uh, last summer. It went 
really well. We learned a lot and we were looking forward to uh, doing that again this summer and, uh, and you know, using those lessons learned. Um, however, um, you know, we have a change in plans. So, um, so just to kind of give you an idea of what we did last summer, so you can compare to what we're going to get this summer, um, what, uh, what we really didn't have a whole lot of time to do within the Electric Guitar Institute was to add more content uh, into an already packed week. So most of the CNC work was done ahead of time, uh, what we call pre-institute work. So in the weeks prior to the face-to-face -face, uh, institute, um, the, the uh, folks would... Uh, get their Fusion account set up, they'd learn how to use Fusion, they would uh, create their guitar body, they would assign tool path to the guitar body. So when they arrived at the Institute, essentially they had uh, a file ready to go, ready to cut. Um, and for the most part, that's, that's what we had. Um, when we, uh, so then during the week, while everybody was working on their electric guitar, um, then uh, we would, uh, uh, we would run the, uh, we'd do the setup and the, um, the cutting of the guitar, of their custom guitar bodies. So that's kind of how we integrated um, that process. So you got a lot of curriculum, you got some hands-on experiences, um, and you went away at the end of the week with a uh, completed electric guitar as well as your custom uh, body blank. So, um, so what we're going to do this time um, again, because, you know, the electric guitar uh, process is, is, uh, is, a, is a busy time, uh, we didn't feel like we could just integrate more into that. So what we're going to do is offer a week-long um, remote institute for CNC that goes in front of the electric guitar um, institute. And um, there will also be some pre-institute work for that. What we're hoping to do is uh, before we meet for that week, we want everybody to have gotten an, an, an Autodesk account and downloaded the, the, Fusion, uh, the, the Fusion software, made sure that it runs on their Mac or their PC, everything's ready to go, and then we'll spend a week, uh, which is what's shown on this slide here, we'll spend a week going through tutorials and, uh, and lessons on, on the Fusion 360 design tools, and um, and uh, then uh, also you'll be concurrently you'll be going through uh, some new uh, uh, modular learning activities that we've developed specifically for CNC. So you'll be you'll be our guinea pigs on some of those, and uh, so you'll have quite a few lessons there that you'll be able to go through and then take back to your classrooms as well. Uh, and then once you know a little bit about Fusion 360, we're going to turn you loose to uh, make your own custom guitar body um, in the CAD software. And uh, then when, after we check that out, make sure that that's all gonna be good. We're gonna have you go through and assign the tool path and create the G-code necessary to run the CNC router. So you're, you're essentially gonna get everything that you would in a normal institute with the exception of that hands-on piece of setting up and operating the CNC machine tool. We just didn't, find a feasible way for us to be able to do that with the resources that we had. So we're hoping that you'll join us next summer and you'll be able to uh, participate in the face-to-face -face, uh, CNC Institute and uh, you'll already know all of your fusion stuff and you'll be able to make an even better um, uh, guitar design um, through, through that process. Anything to add, Tom? Yeah, there was a question that came up that uh, somebody would like that's in the electric uh, group would like to join the CNC learning group. And I think that should be uh, a okay to do. All we need to do is add them to the Canvas course. So that wouldn't be any additional uh, resources or, or modifications. So um, what they would need to do is reach out um, to your team leader to let them know uh, that if you're in the electric guitar that you want to also join the CNC learning team uh, so we can add you to the canvas course for the CNC uh, materials. Yeah, that, that, that should be great. So yeah, just uh, contact the, the, uh, the person that you've been working with so far and they'll forward your name on to one of the CNC leaders and then we'll get you going. So I yep. don't think it'll be a problem at all. So next up is the electric guitar remote Institute with uh, Debbie and Chad. All 
right, so for folks who are just starting out in their guitar building journey, they're gonna start in the Electric um, Build Institute. And so we've got two weeks of fun planned for you where you're going to work through the modular learning activities as well as work through the economy kit um, where the picture is shown uh, down below. Uh, we're also going to have the CNC folks joining us after their um, CNC training. They're gonna come over and join us for the electric remote training as well. Um, so all of this, like we've mentioned before, are done through Canvas um, and you're going to get a simulated experience of what it's going to be like for your students. So we've provided a model of how to possibly do this, as Chad mentioned, as a hybrid, as well as we're once we're completed the workshop, we're going to show you um, our electric uh, full 16 week Canvas course. So Chad, what else would you like to add? Oh, geez, I don't know that I'd add anything else to that. Um... I don't know. I'll just leave it right there. I think in the, the Q&A, people might have some some questions, but um, yeah. Perfect. And as you can see, we've actually partnered with a new uh, partner, Musico, to help uh, train on how to play the guitar. And that is going to be available to the faculty that are participating with us this summer and their students once they start our, pro our program, we'll have access to the Mosiku learning environment to help train on how to play the instrument. Next up is Doug on the acoustic instrument, on the acoustic remote learning uh, institute. Yeah, so with the acoustic guitar project with, and having all of our on-site locations canceled for the summer, that presented a real conundrum. Um, unlike the electric guitars that you might be able to assemble in your kitchen table with a screwdriver, uh, and, a, and a soldering iron, some of the resources that are necessary to build our acoustic guitar kits require some tooling and fixturing that tend to be kind of pricey and it just was going to be out of bounds um, to have people try to do that in their garage. So as an alternative to cover some of the concepts that go along with the acoustic guitar, uh, we've opted for implementing a cigar box guitar workshop for this summer with our remote learning. I'm really excited about these. Cigar box guitars are easy to build. They're a lot of fun to play when they're together. And for folks that might struggle with learning to play a six string guitar, a three or four string cigar box guitar and the way that it's tuned and the way it's used uh, can be a little less intimidating to get into. And people may find that the playing side of it is, uh, is a lot of fun instead of maybe uh, trying to learn the six string guitar. But we still have a number of concepts that hold true. Um, between the cigar box guitar and the acoustic guitar. So we'll be able to have some MLAs where there's some activities with instru acoustic instruments where the cigar box guitar is perfectly applicable. And it may be a bit of an eye opener in terms of implementing with your students for an instrument that's low cost and um, has a little bit fewer technical difficulties compared to building some of the other stringed instruments that we would do. Um, the guitar kits that we're getting have uh, fretboards that are already fretted and all the major holes for the hardware components like the tuners have already been pre-drilled. So assembly in that regard is going to be simpler. There will be some measuring that you'll have to do and there will be some use of a handsaw to do some cutting um, and that'll give you a nice outlet after having spent so much time in front of the computer. So we're excited to have all the acoustic folks with us and certainly uh, the next summer that we're able to do face-to-face -face time, we'd love to have you come back and build one of the Taylor based acoustic guitar kits with us as well. Perfect, and as we move forward, we're gonna be talking a little bit about our evaluation process. And we've talked about uh, that the Canvas Axis will be launching here in, uh, towards the end of June. So Debbie, can you talk a little bit about the evaluation process that's gonna be happening within our Canvas environment? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. So one of the things that, one of the um, deliverables that you will be turning into us is a photo blog. And so every step of the way, we want you to take a picture of what you're working on, whether that be the CNC project, your cigar box guitar, or the electric economy kit. And you'll be blogging about your experiences. And it's a really good way to review what you've done. Um, and it's also something that's very neat for you to walk into your classroom, hopefully. Um, we can do that in the fall safely. Um, and show your students um, exactly what you did over your summer vacation. And so we're going to have you guys complete a photo blog and upload that to Canvas, as well as some surveys, of course, um, as well as take some MLAs and a few quizzes in Canvas just to um, get some practice with that. 
Um, and so, Sean, would you like to talk more about the Canvas access? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Debbie. So, um, as you have heard, uh, both in this webinar and in the many email correspondence and video uh, posts that we've created, we've obviously rapidly adapted our approach to this summer as new information was made available. Um, the conduit with which we're going to be sharing all of this information is Canvas. And I'd like to quickly ask in the chat if you if you have accessibility to the chat right now, uh, yes or no, if you've used Canvas in any capacity. So that, whether as a student, you help somebody design a course, you've played around in it, just a quick yes or no or yeah, wire. And so I'm seeing about 50-50 looks like, <clears throat> maybe slightly more in the yes category. So Happy to report Canvas is very cool and rather intuitive, I think, especially as a student. I've used it as both a student um, and instructor and uh, helping to facilitate the San Diego State uh, implementation of Canvas. Um, so in short, Tom, if you go back one slide, I just want to mention how you'll get access. So the good news is you don't have to worry about it yet. Um, Tom, I believe the week of the 29th, I think it is, in a couple weeks, everyone will get access. So all of you participants will get access to the course or courses in which you're enrolled. Um, you'll get an email to the email address you provide to us. One really important note that you'll see on there, the second line there, if your school is currently using uh, a Canvas license, so if you're perhaps in those yes categories and you're actually using it to teach, and you've already provided us with your school email address, so your .edu, in most cases, email address, you'll need to provide us with a personal email address. So you can do so, Tom, is that, what's the best way? Should they email me or uh, or email info, or what, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so the best way would be to work with their team leaders on that, since there's okay. already a relationship with each of the team leads. So Got it. Uh, coordinating any address or uh, email changes, or if you want to get added into the CNC uh, learning, that would be the best way to handle it. Perfect. So that way we can add you to um, the, the, the we can we can update the spreadsheet. And Tom Morrissey, you're on the you're on Blackboard, but may switch soon. That's what San Diego State and many many other institutions are in the middle of. So um, just that quick note that we will enroll you. You'll you will get instructions for accessing your course or courses via that email address. And again, if you're institution is currently using Canvas, you'll have to provide us with a personal email address. And I do want to mention that um, one of the, the best parts about Canvas is the ability to access material on any device, on a uh, computer, tablet, or on a smartphone. And I encourage you to download the student app if you haven't already done so, the student Canvas app, and that will enable you to get push notifications when your facilitators reach out, et cetera. So here's just a quick snapshot of what these courses look like. If you happen to be in all three, you would see all three. Otherwise, you would see one or two. And um, we'll, uh, here's a quick snapshot of what this is the CNC uh, the course looks like, but over on the left, you can see home syllabus announcements, etc. cetera. Um, that's where we'll be engaging you in those items. So if there's an announcement about, hey, there's a new video out, check it out. Or, um, hey, everybody, we're going to post about how we're going to approach the fall in a flexible way of uncertainty in this discussion board. That's what you'll see. And also, it's going to walk you through. You can see the CNC course, for example, is laid out in three stages very clearly and uh, your instructors will walk you through that process. Last note on this, many of these resources will be made available to you. Um, more details coming soon on how that will be the case. So if you happen to be using Canvas or if you wanna set up your own free account online, you can use these same resources either in a face-to-face -face blended or online environment this fall. And with that, I believe all the Canvas things have been noted and we're happy to answer any questions as we, as we go through um, the summer. Absolutely. So what expectations do we have uh, going forward and, and uh, some of the logistical details that will occur? Um, I've seen a few questions pop up in the chat and we'll get to those here as we uh, get closer to the end. But right now we're going to ask you to, to do any pre-work and obviously software downloads. Um, you're going to have some supplies that you may have to purchase. And, uh, and again, it's a may. It's not a situation that you have to to have them, but you may actually have them at home already. So we'll see how that works. And we found low cost vendors, primarily through Amazon, uh, for uh, the items that you might uh, need to, to purchase. Um, we're gonna ask you to, to obviously get involved within the Canvas courses. 
Uh, within that, there's going to be some paperwork that needs to be done uh, as a participant. Uh, so that way you can receive an incentive uh, check as part of this summer's training opportunity. And to receive the incentive check, um, we're going to ask you that you're going to have to complete your course, obviously. And uh, that's going to include any evaluations and feedback and the photo blog and so forth to, to be involved with that uh, incentive opportunity. Uh, along with that, some of the modules you're going to be doing and uh, we'll also have you, as I mentioned, you'll have you submit the, your, your blog process also. It takes a little bit more than 30 days or right around 30 days once we uh, get all the information uh, for payment uh, into our system here at Sinclair and you'll get a check mailed out to you. So that's why it's important to have the proper mailing addresses and all that on file with us. So that way we're able to uh, ensure uh, that uh, the information is uh, done quickly and uh, accordingly. So what does the supply list? This happens to be a quick draft list that uh, I put together so that way you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at and your team leaders will send out a more complete list with links uh, to specific items uh, that you can purchase. For example, if you're gonna build the electric guitar, uh, one of the big things is soldering iron. Um, there's some really nice $16 soldering iron kits through Amazon uh, that we encourage if you don't have one already. It comes with the solder and extra wire and, and a lot of nice little uh, tools that will make your soldering uh, process easier. And Tim Wilhelm cr has created a phenomenal soldering video. So if you've never soldered before, you'll be uh, well and comfortable about soldering once you've uh, watched his video and uh, did some more tests on the soldering. You're going to need some type of a finish. We recommend True Oil because it's an easy uh, finish. You can get it through Amazon. You can also get it at the local sporting goods uh, store. Um, it's a very easy finish to work with. It's hard and it's simple. You can always spray paint your guitar if you choose to do that or you can also um, manage the uh, process of um, uh, swirl dipping, but that's going to be a little bit more of a difficult event to try to swirl dip it uh, as part of the, uh, the overall process. All right, the uh, sandpaper, drill bit sets, fret leveling tools, and the fret leveling tools are just optional. You might need them, but more than likely you will not need those. And and on the acoustic side, a few fewer less tools, or you're going to need a coping saw and obviously some finish and so forth. The STEM Guitar Summit. Um, that right now is an event that we hold each year as a way for faculty members from around the country to get together uh, and present what they're doing, what works, what doesn't work, um, what experiences they've had, how they've overcome some of the challenges uh, and roadblocks that get put up in front of you as you try to implement the project and so forth. The really phenomenal opportunity is that K-12 faculty we fund a thousand dollar stipend for you to attend as a presenter. I'm currently working on the same opportunity for uh, college faculty also, seeing that this year most travel and PD budgets are being cut by colleges. So I'm working on that currently and so more information will come out on that. But as part of our uh, family, we encourage you to, to take advantage of this uh, opportunity to get together with uh, many others uh, that are currently building instruments and, and in some cases have built for many years. A couple of ideas that our team has tossed around as part of the uh, uh, the STEM Guitar Summit is to hold it uh, around the same time as the National Association of Music Merchants Show and that's held out in Anaheim, California in January. And they've got a really nice education uh, sequence that they have put together at the NAMM show. So the idea was to either front uh, with our event or do it post 
uh, of the uh, NAM show event. And so it's a, it's a phenomenal opportunity as a, as a, um, a venue to, uh, to coordinate with. And if that doesn't take place, then we'll pick some place in February at one of our partner colleges to, uh, to host a STEM guitar summit. So it's 501 and we are now at our very last slide. So we've had to pick up the pace a little bit on the second half. So there may be a few questions. Um, we do have a quick poll um, that I'll launch also at this point. And uh, I wanna thank you for attending. But if you do have any questions, go ahead and please put them in the chat and our team will uh, answer them both live and uh, via chat. So let me launch the poll and uh, we'll see if there's any questions. No questions. All right, well, thank you so much for attending. Uh, if there are no other questions, we'll stay on the, uh, on the webinar for a few minutes in case something does pop up. Um, our team, is there anything else that you would like to share? Man, everybody got really quiet really fast. All right, well, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for attending our webinar. We're gonna go ahead and, and save the recording and post it, and you'll have the opportunity to review that. Our team leaders will be out, uh, reaching out here over the next couple of weeks, um, and you'll get your Canvas information towards the end of the month. Guitar kits will ship also around that same time. Tom, we'll put the recording link under the Institute tab on the website, um, and you can reach out to your uh, Institute lead if, if, if you need access to that. Perfect. And Tom, we have a stream of questions coming in on the chat side. Do you want to just address some of those now? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have Adam. I'm sorry, Adam. How do you say your last name? It says, could you go back to the supplies slide? Absolutely. And maybe while everybody is peeking at that one, um, how do we set up Canvas for us as educators and students? Um, I, I could answer that one. Um, so the Canvas course that's being put together for this summer's virtual institutes, um, the intent is that you'll actually be able to um, grab that course for your own use with your own kids if you wanted to. And then throughout the summer, we're also working on putting together a semester long course that will also be made available um, to educators who have gone through our institutes. Tom, you want to add to that or, or did I cover it? That covers it. Okay. Someone asked something. Oh, dates for next summer. Totally unknown at this point. Right. Um, it will be next summer. Um, there will be a summer and we will be scheduling events typically in December. We try to uh, organize our timeline events. Um, initially, we'll uh, reach out to our current uh, host institutions that we're going to host this summer to see if they're still available. And uh, there may be some changes, there may not be. Um, but we'll have to coordinate events and timing for next summer. But typically we'll hold events between June and August. Team, per Shirley's note about shipping to America, Samoa, it, it uh, makes me realize we need to add um, U.S. territories, I think it's territory, yes. uh, to the map. And 48 states and how many territories, Tom? Do we have anyone from Guam or no, nobody Puerto from Rico other or anywhere else? Nope. Not, not yet, but we have Colombia, uh, South America, mm -hmm. and Australia involved. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, can we just restate who the group leaders are? We've got Ben. Is it Ben? Where? Sorry, the, the, 
the chat is scrolling here. Um, Benjamin asks who the group leaders are for the groups. I believe, Ben, um, you've, emails have been sent out from each of the group leaders. Um, but Tom, can you just restate who the, the leaders are for each of the institute types? Wow, this is going from memory because I don't have the list in front of me. I know that Mike Akins is managing some of the electric guitar events. Uh, Matt Peitzman is managing a CNC event. Steve Brown is managing a CNC event. Doug Hunt is managing both of our acoustic events. Um, and I know I'm going to miss somebody. Um, and again, it's from memory here, so... Tim has KCC Tim's, CNC. Yep. Tim's got the KCC event for the CNC environment. Um, I know I'm thinking I'm missing one here, but you'll, you should have received an email and you will be receiving more emails from the team leaders. Yeah, there's a question here that I think is right up Doug's alley uh, from David Brannon asking about the particular guitar molds available on Stumac for the kits that we use. Doug, do you see that in chat? Sorry, I'm not seeing that. Hi, this is Mark French. I, I see it there as well. Okay. Um, it's, I, I think it would be pretty surprising if the Stumac molds fit it. Um, it's Doug, it's based on a basically like a, a dreadnought, kind of a generic dreadnought shape. There's no such thing as a standard guitar body design, and every set of molds you buy is going to be different. Um, it's not that hard to make a set if you want. In fact, it's very simple to make a set if you if you want ones that fit that. Um, you know, you, you trace it out and, and, and cut yourself out a set of molds or you can lay it out in CAD as well. Yeah. Doug, is that about right? I'm sorry, my attention was pulled away for a second. I apologize. Okay. No, it's uh, the, well, I was just trying to get, get across that the, the molds for the, that you see on Stu Mac or any other site are probably a little bit different than every other mold. There's, there's no one right. standard set of dimensions anywhere. Yeah, and we've got a what a, you, I think you said a slightly reduced size dreadnought, which is a pretty accurate take. And I don't know that there's any molds for that necessarily. Yeah. Um, and given the way the sides are fabricated, we found it really isn't necessary. Yeah, yeah. the sides you, you are really these without a mold. If you really decided you wanted one, print out a sheet of big sheet of graph paper, or get a you know buy one off of Amazon or something, trace the mold and you know digitize it. You can, yeah, you can trace the shape of the front or the back. Someone in the someone in the chat has mentioned that Blues Creek Guitars um, has got a big baby Taylor mold that would work. Okay. So that's our very own Eddie. No, oh, good. Okay. Anyway. Thanks, Ed. Any other questions? Oh, beautiful question on here uh, from Erica. Thank you all. This was very informative. I'm wondering how we'll build community online to connect with the other educators virtually participating in our sessions. Is there a network of educators who have participated as well so we might be able to connect with others locally? So the first step would be our map, our interactive map that's on our guitarbuilding.org website. It's actually a live map that you can click on each of the states to see what schools that have participated over the years uh, with our project. And so if there's any schools regionally or locally, you're, you're able then to connect directly with them. Uh, our website does have a community feature. However, it hasn't been used widely. And so we've struggled with that as a group. Um, trying to, to build that community flavor. And we're hoping that the Canvas environment and this remote learning will help build that connectivity, um, especially within your learning group, but a, in a larger sense also as we continue to use the Canvas tools. 
And I can add to that, those of the, you that have used Canvas before know there's both discussion boards, which we'll be leveraging. Um, and obviously we'll be having Zoom sessions like this, but there's also the inbox tool in Canvas in which you can see the list of, of participants in the different courses and you can reach out to those individual participants. So certainly these cohorts this summer will provide that and uh, Canvas may be an area that we moving forward continue those discussions and ability to contact one another. Um, I'd also add, I was reminded, Imelda in the chat asking about the STEM guitar app. I don't know if you can see me here, but um, for both Android and iPhone, if you look up STEM guitar project, uh, we do have an app and there is a community feature which operates just like Instagram. And um, past participants have used it during their institutes and have even um, continue to use it, you know, beyond their institutes. That might be an also that might also be a good uh, resource if you wanted to network or or have that kind of community uh, experience around all of this. So for our CNC team, um, our school uses six week cycles for classes. How long of a class do you recommend for CNC programming uh, for students? Wow. All right, I'll jump in. I'll try to do my best on this one. Uh, in terms of timeline uh, on this, Greg, uh, most of our coursework, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to vary on your CNC equipment specifically and how long it may take to actually cut a body out, um, but it, you can plan for a several week session of body design. Students will want to over design their body shapes and they'll spend way too much on the design side and not enough time on the programming side and the, uh, the testing side. Uh, we suggest and recommend cutting out foam uh, bodies before you actually cut the wood bodies as a test. Um, and that way you're, you can go through the setup steps using the foam tools. Plus it's a lot safer on the tools in case something has a, uh, a major catastrophe. The, uh, the process would probably be one of your six week sessions, you could probably utilize that whole six week time period to go from start to finish on the design, testing, and then body cutout uh, phase. And once students have cut out their bodies, uh, they could also, you can then start getting them uh, started on the electric guitar remote learning uh, tools also to get them started on their uh, actual assembly. So another there question, a, go ahead. There was a Fusion 360 question way, way up. Um, it, it, somebody was asking if you could run Fusion 360 on a Mac, and I'm not sure, but I think so. Does anybody know for sure? If Fusion 360 is primarily an online uh, operating, or an online design CAD tool. Right. I believe it does work you may have to run an emulator. I don't know if they have a specific app uh, on the Mac side. Okay, you know, we got a bunch of people. Bird. We already got a bunch of people confirming that it works on yeah. their Mac. There you so, go. I thought so. Works great. There you go. And there was another question that was there regarding uh, should they download the free Canvas account prior to the start of the uh, summer session that would be for Sean or Chad uh, no need um, it's not gonna hurt anything if you do have a free canvas account associated with your personal email address um, again if you have a enterprise email or a, a institutional um, uh, canvas account associated with your email address you will need to provide to us your personal email but in short there's no need for you to take action now when you receive the email it will prompt you to set up your account and enter your information. So you can, if you like, no need to. Okay. Clint indicates that he could not find the STEM guitar app in the Play Store. 
for Android. Is it possible to get involved with the veterans builds? Yes. Um, right now we're doing it limited in certain areas of the country. Um, we have not come up with a plan yet to expand it uh, in a large sense. Right now we're still in the data gathering stage uh, and trying to, to work on that, but absolutely. Um, right now, um, Tony Villegas is our uh, contact uh, for the Phoenix, Phoenix Patriot uh, Foundation. He uh, helps manage that organization and he's part of our team. If you reach out to me, I can get you in contact with him um, on the veteran side. And so that is a national organization. And so there could be some opportunities to set up more regional events uh, with the uh, Phoenix Patriot Foundation. Okay. All right, at this point, I think we'll wrap up the, uh, the event. Thank you so much. And we'll look forward to uh, connecting with everybody coming up here in July. Um, we're gonna do, like I said, some live sessions uh, and uh, live Zoom sessions. So it'll be a lot of fun. And we look forward to uh, working with everybody this summer.